Hey everybody, it's Benny One, and I'm back at you with my last DCEU movie review, everybody. That's right, I'm finally doing my review for Wonder Woman 1984. Everybody, that's right, I wanted to re-watch all of them and re-review all of the DCEU movies that I had reviewed year, like almost two years ago on my old channel that got deleted. I did it, done, done, done. I did watch this movie on Christmas uh, when it came out. And I wanted to watch it again before I did a review for it because I kind of didn't totally understand and know how I <laughs> felt about the movie, to tell you the truth. So so this is a sequel to the first Wonder Woman movie that Patty Jenkins directed, and she is back directing this one. She does a great job, once again, directing this movie. They, like, they make this the 80s theme and aesthetics and setting in this movie, phenomenal, done well, it looks like the 80s, that mall that is in this movie in the beginning, screams the 80s, and my childhood, because the malls were still really popular in the 90s when I was growing up, so, um, just great, the setting and locale and all that stuff, they recreated the mid 80s perfectly, so Patty Jenkins does great once again, I'm really happy she's going to direct the third Wonder Woman movie. Uh, we have Gal Gadot back as Wonder Woman. Diana Prince, everybody. <clears throat> she's great. Her character deals is still dealing with the loss of Steve Trevor uh, in this movie. They show that really well. They show her gripping with it, especially when he comes back. Um, and she's trying to stay hidden. Um, so that's kind of how they answered that whole thing of, well, in Batman versus Superman, she's basically hasn't been around the entire time since the first movie. So what's going on? She, she tries to stay hidden. Like she does, like she takes cameras out and shit when she's helping out here and there and she doesn't get seen really. So, so that's kind of how they answered that a little bit, even though I know people probably saw her, but you know, it's whatever. And then we have Pedro Pastiel. He plays Max Lord, and he he's great. He's the show stealer in this one. He was my favorite character in the movie. Max Lord, he's this guy, oil business tycoon guy that basically is dead broke in the movie, and he gets a hold of this basically wishing stone, and he wishes himself to become the stone, and he can grant people's wishes then, and then he gets something in return for it. And that's how he starts getting all this oil and money and riches and shit. So he he was great in this movie. Like he was funny. He was a very um Lex Luthery type character from the Christopher Reeves Superman movies, which this Wonder Woman movie feels a lot like the Christopher Reeves era Superman movies. It really does. You can tell that they're pulling from that and paying homage to that era of comic book movies that Christopher Reeves did with the Superman movies. It screams it. Like, it's almost like a little tribute to that. So, I thought it was great. I loved it. Um, and then Chris Pine, everybody, returns to play Steve Trevor, everybody. And as soon as they announced that Max Lord was the one of the villains in the movie, I kind of figured out in my head because of my comic book background and reading comic books, knowing the characters already, that that's how they were going to bring him back with the wishing stone. She accidentally does it like she doesn't just wish him back on purpose like it just so that's how he came back. And he was I liked his character. I don't. I didn't like his character as much in this one as I did the first movie. Um, I did feel like it was kind of forced somewhat to have him in this movie a little bit. And they kind of recreated some of the scenes um, that were in the first movie. Like when she has to say goodbye to him again. It was, I mean, it was, you know, it hits you here a bit. But not as much as the first movie. Not as, the first movie when he dies, that was, that's some sad shit right there. And they tried to recreate that a little bit. So, but he did a good job. I enjoy watching uh, Chris Pine in movies. I really do. I love his Captain Kirk. And then Cheetah, everybody. Cheetah. She did a phenomenal job. Um, why am I forgetting her name right now? I don't know why I'm forgetting her name. Good Lord. Um, but she, they did a phenomenal job 
uh, with Cheetah. Like, she did a freaking great job. But yeah, Cheetah was phenomenal. Kirsten Wig, Jesus Christ, I forgot her name, everybody. Horrible. <laughs> Shoot me now, Jesus. She did great. They did a good job of Cheetah. Like, she didn't honestly turn into full-blown CGI Cheetah until the end of the movie. And they showed her and Diana develop a friendship. And that's, that friendship slowly starts to crumble and crumble and crumble and crumble until she turns into this evil-ass chick that turns into a fucking cheetah, an evil cheetah. And the CGI didn't look that bad. I don't know, some people said the CG looked horrible. I don't know, it was a night scene. I don't, and when they showed her face, I thought they, I liked the design of her. They did for a live action version of Cheetah, she looked good. It looked better in Cats, for Christ's sakes. So, most definitely looked better in Cats. Uh, but overall, I, I don't, <laughs> I like the first Wonder Woman more. Um, I think this one, had a lot of like meaning uh, with things that are actually kind of going on in our society today. I do think a lot of the themes and ideas and meanings behind things that were going on and brought up in this movie have a lot to do with what's going on in our world today. And of course they do that kind of stuff on purpose. So, but it was an entertaining movie, very lighthearted, uh, filled with hope. Like I said, it, it goes back to that Christopher Reeves Superman era of movies. It has that feel to it. Um, it's an entertaining movie. I just don't like it as much as the first Wonder Woman movie. So, but I'm going to give this one a, a 7.5 out of 10. And the main reason I'm doing that is, is because I feel like the movie's a little bit too long. I feel like the first hour, it probably could have been about... 15 to 20 minutes they could have trimmed out of the movie so so I felt like it did drag a little bit in there not not like a bad drag it was just because I was never bored with the movie but so yeah guys I'm gonna give this one a 7.5 out of 10 it's very entertaining um or most definitely rewatchable so thank you guys for watching my review for Wonder Woman 1984 and all of my DCEU movie reviews and I think I'm gonna be reviewing the Spider-Man movies next, everybody. That is right, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And I'll be catching y'all on tube later because I have spoken.